This is my seventh user-defined function, Brainstorm. And what I'm going to do in this function is actually do the exact opposite of what I did in the other functions, where instead of concatenating strings, I'm actually going to split them up and convert them into an array. Now this output is actually meant to be used in advanced functions because it doesn't output a single value, it actually outputs a full array. So it's very difficult to use it without really knowing advanced Excel. I'll show you what I mean. So for instance, if I wanted to split this string up into just the names, I would say equals split up, control shift A to get my arguments. I would take the string, I would tell it my separator is a comma and a space, and I would set the vertical parameter to false. It actually doesn't really matter in this case, but I'm going to show you what that does. So if I highlight this and then go to my formulas tab and then calculate now, you see that it actually converts this single string into an array of strings, separating them by commas, of course. So as a straight output, there's actually not a whole lot you can do with it. It is a CSE function, so I would have to hit Control shift enter And if I actually wanted it to work as an output, I would have to highlight five cells, press F2, and then hit Control shift enter And that way, we can actually split the uh, split the items up into five different cells. I actually just wanted to show you that it does not remove the duplicates. So if I were to change my separator argument into a semicolon, and then hit Control Shift Enter and split it out, it actually just takes the separator out and then puts test in there. Same goes with pretty much any character I choose. So whether it be a pipe or a period or a semicolon or a comma, um, anything can work as a separator. So for instance, if I wanted to split out a sentence like so. It'd say equals split up. Grab this sentence. My separator is a space. I'm actually, the last argument's optional, so I'm just going to ignore it for now. Highlight that and go to calculate now. And it gives me an array of words separated by a space. So the spaces are deleted and the words are just shown out like that. There's actually a lot of functionality. So uh, for instance, like this one, I could write a function to pull out the max out of this guy without splitting this up. So I could say split up and it's going to be a comma. That gives me an array of numbers converted into text like so. So if I just wrap a negative negative around there and I say hey well what's the biggest of those? I can just wrap a max around that. Control shift enter gives me 6.5 which is the case. So um, without further ado I'll show you how it works. Hit Alt F11 and go to your back end. We can start from there. So we, before we dive into this, this is definitely the longest and most difficult function that I've created so far. It uses a lot of cool different things such as optional arguments or optional parameters and it actually rather than spitting out a single value it spits out an array of values. That's why we type it as a variant. So I'll show you what that looks like. Like the rest of our functions we have to think about it in terms of what values it's going to put out and what parameters it will accept. I'm just going to start by typing function split string, or what I, I called this split up, didn't I? So I'm going to say function split up. Now my first parameter is going to be my string, and I'm going to declare it as a string. My second is going to be a separator, also a string. And my last parameter is going to be an optional parameter that's going to be a boolean. So I'm just the uh, I'm going to call it vertical. So I'm going to set it to false. And to make a parameter optional, you type in optional parameter name, which is vertical, as the type boolean. And to, to make it optional, you actually have to have it equal to something. So I'm going to say equal to false as my default value. And the whole function is going to be typed out as a variant. So the idea behind this function is that we're actually going to cycle through each item based on where the separators are. And then we're going to place that item into a new array, into different positions within a different array. So we're going to use two loops and we're actually going to create our first variable which is going to be an array. I'm just going to call it new array. I tell VBA that it's an array by using these open and close parentheses. We haven't dimensioned the size of the array yet, but we will. For some reason, VBA doesn't like a variable within the first declaration of an array, so you have to redimension it and then you can put a variable. Otherwise the compiler won't actually let this code run. So I cannot put the array parameters in there just yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is declare another variable as an integer. And this guy is just going to be an incrementer that's going to sit within one of my for loops. So I'm going to have two for loops. One's going to be using variable j and the other is going to be using variable i. Okay, so 
once I'm done with that, I can actually, what I want to do is get the number of strings that are going to be in this array. So I want to get the bounds of the array, for instance. Uh, how I'm going to do that is a function I've already created. Um, it's called x equals count string, and it accepts two arguments. I actually have a video for that if you want to go take a look at that. I'll put it in the description. And I'm just going to add one. However, if you don't want to use count string, you can use another function. So I'm just going to write that here. So x equals the length of my string minus the length of the replace my string. My find a string would be my separator. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm finding how many separators this argument exists within the full string. And by doing that, I'm actually figuring out how many items are going to go into the array. So then I can create the bound for the array. So I'm saying the length of my string minus the length of my string where I'm replacing my separator with a null value, like so. Close that off. And then actually what I need to do is divide this by the length of the separator. So for instance, if my separator has two characters instead of one, it will need to divide by two. So if there was five separators, I would need to say, and it had two each, I wouldn't want it to go, I wouldn't want to create the bound of the array as being 10, I need it to be five. So um, once I'm done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and add one to it, like so. And now I can redimension the new array. So I could say redim my new array to x minus 1, and I'm going to call it a string, so it's an array of strings. I'm actually go, going to go ahead and comment this guy out because I don't I don't actually need this. I, I come up with this value right here. So once I'm done with that, I can actually start creating my for loop. Let's say for i equals 1 to x, and then I'm just going to close off i right here. Within this loop, we're actually going to have another for loop. It's going to be using a j statement. So I'm just going to say for j equals 1 to the length of my string. And I'm going to close this off by saying next j. The idea being every time it cycles from here to here, we're actually going to place a new string into the array. And this is where it's actually figuring out which part of my string to put in the array. I'm going to create a new decision construct right here and say if the mid of my string at position j, comma, the length would be the length of my separator is equal to my sep then. So that's like saying if I had a comma for my sep argument, it would look for the comma as it cycles through j. I need to make j equals 1 prior to hitting this loop. So every time this for loop iterates, j will be reset to 1 before this for loop iterates. So I'm going to close this if off with an end if. And if it finds this section of my string to equal my separator, I'm going to create the new array. So new array at placement i or index of i minus 1. And the reason I'm doing minus 1 is because arrays start at 0. And we started i at 1. So I have to say i minus 1 is equal to the mid of my string. Start and place 1, comma, and then the length would be j minus 1. So j is starting at the beginning. It's going to the right of the string in this mid function. And basically, we're going to start at the beginning of my string and go x amount of characters over to the right and pull that into the array. OK, so once I'm done, done with that, I actually want to get rid of that part of my string. So we're not cycling over and over again through my string. So we're going to adjust my string by saying my string equals the mid. You can tell that I love the mid function. J plus, um, this is the start of course, the length of my sep, and the length I need it to go is the length of my string. So basically every time this code hits this line, my string gets readjusted to become smaller and smaller and smaller as it cuts it down. So this mid function is deleting the characters off the front of the string at the point it finds the last separator. Um, once I'm done with that, I'm going to need it to exit this for loop. So this exit for always refers to the immediate for loop, which is this j loop right here. And then I'm going to want it to end if, like it does. Next j, so it'll cycle around. And next i should be here as well. OK, so there is one more thing we need to do before this is finished. We actually need to say if, and then I'm going to say count string 
my string as the full string and the partial string as my set is equal to zero, then my new array is going to be i minus one equal to my string. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, if you can't find any of the separators within my string, because my string is getting cut down and down, that means that we're done. So we need to exit this for and and if. By the way, if you don't have this count string function, you can do something like if this is equal to zero, then uh, and then you can just do something like that. So that should work as well. So this if statement should only evaluate to true at the very end once all of the replacement strings have been deleted. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Of course, there's one more thing we have to do is solve this optional vertical argument up here. And we haven't really done anything with it. After the loop, the i loop, the for i loop, we escape it. We need to solve for vertical. So I'm going to say if vertical I don't need a comparative operator because vertical is either true or false. Then I'm going to say split up equals application dot transpose new array. Else split up is going to equal new array and if. Okay, that should do it. Um, so basically what this does is it converts it from a horizontal array to a vertical array. So if vertical is true, convert split up to a vertical array. And let's test it in the back end and see if I made any mistakes. So I'm going to say equals split up. This is my cell and my separator is going to be a comma space. Looks good so far, but the truth is if I have to highlight this and hit calculate now, and it looks like it worked, which is great. So anyway, if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment below. I know this is kind of a complex one, but it's uh, really rewarding, and I think there's a lot of uses for this.